Alongside Joe Silva and Sean Shelby, I'm John Anik. This is the watch list for UFC 199. Yours on pay-per-view June 4th from the Forum in Inglewood, California. Let's get right into it. Top of the card, the main event for the UFC Middleweight Championship. Luke Rockhold will not face Chris Weidman. He is out due to injury. So in steps Michael Bisping. Finally, 25 fights into his UFC career, the title shot has materialized. And I think that's why we may see the best Michael Bisping we've yeah. ever seen. Uh, he's always fought incredibly hard, he's very talented, but to, to be that close that many times over that many years and never get the shot, uh, to finally get it, I think it's going to bring out the very best in Michael Bisping, and, and he's the guy who's already shown, you, you can never count him out. Yeah. Look how badly he was hurt in that Anderson Silver right. fight, and he still managed to persevere and to win the fight, so you can never count out Michael Bisping, and we might see the best version of him that we've ever seen. Now, the big issue for Michael Bisping may not be that he only has 17 days to prepare. It might just be that the opponent is just that elite. Luke Rocco might be the most well-rounded mixed martial artist that I've ever seen. Entering his fighting prime, your expectations now for Rocco as he tries to make good on this first title defense. Well, this would be an amazingly difficult fight for anybody in the world if you had six months to prepare. Uh, Luke Rockhold is just scary. He's super talented everywhere. Rockhold beating up that pocket. That'll do it. Luke Rockhold delivers. While he was always a guy who was very sure of himself, I, I think his confidence is at an all-time high after defeating Chris Weidman, becoming the champion, and I think he's going to do everything in his power to hold onto that belt for as long as he possibly can. All right, co-headliner also with a belt on the line, the UFC Bantamweight Championship, Dominic Cruz trying to retain against Uriah Faber, his rival. Third meeting here between these two guys. Were these guys, you know, calling your phone, asking for this fight? Did they, they obviously wanted to make this happen again. Well, there's nothing better than getting to punch your rival in the face and get paid for it. You know, they're one and one apiece. And I think people forget how close the last fight was yeah. between the two of them. And Uriah's got that big right hand. And what he's known for is that he is really talented on the feet and he hurts his opponents and he ends up finishing with submissions because he's so quick at, at jumping on that. Chasing him down, looking to finish the fight. He's got the guillotine. Uriah has a squeeze like few people. Looking to finish the fight. He's got all over. Uriah Faber. And that's all it takes for, for Uriah. But of course you have one of, you know, the, the top pound for pound fighters in the world that he's facing. Dominic Cruz is all over him. It is all He's out. over! It is all over! Dominic Cruz is back! General question here, uh, and probably you didn't do homework on this, but how does this rivalry stack up to some of the great ones in UFC history? Because it really seems to have a lot of legs here as this pay-per-view approaches. <laughs> it does. I mean, when you talk about the, you talk to them privately, they've never had really. Uh, aside from having immense respect for yes. you know the talent that each one possesses. They, they really had uh, nothing nice to say about each other. But, you know, I think that, you know, you have this, this fight for, for the top Bantamweight in the world. But I think, you know, this really will be the year of the Bantamweight. Yeah. The amazing talent that is in this division now, you know, you've got Caraway, you've got Jimmy Rivera coming up. That guy's a monster. We've got Garbrandt. We've got TJ Dillashaw who's out there waiting. And, and his rematch with a Sun Sal. You've got Lineker that's moved in the division. Dodson's that moved in the division. They proved that they can knock out anybody in the world. It's a, a division full of killers right now. That top 10 is absolutely absurd at 135 pounds. And of course, more clarity to that division coming your way at UFC 190. Lightweight division here at UFC 199. Big opportunity for James Vick, undefeated fighter, trying to take his career to the next level and getting a top 10 guy here in Benil Dariush. Vick, you know, he does not know how to lose. Yeah, you know, he's a very talented kid, still young in his career, but he's showing an improvement each time out. He's a guy with very good reach, very good stand up, but he also has ground skills. Look at his guillotine, very tight. He's got it. James Vick has done it. He doesn't want to be on the slow track. He yeah. wants the opportunity to fight better and better guys. And in a ranked guy like Benil Dariush, he's, it's going to be really show us where he's at in the division right now. A lot else to like here at UFC 199. Big fight here at Featherweight, Sean. A couple of top five contenders, Max Holloway, Ricardo Lamas. What impresses you the most about these two top contenders? Max Holloway, just his rise. He's so young when he came into the UFC. I think he was 5-0. and And really what got him into the UFC was, you know, he took on a guy, Harris Sarmiento, who had 30-plus fights in, like, his 34th fight. You know, and that really showed me that this guy 
is, you know, he can deal with uh, guys with so much experience, and that's why I brought him in so early. And he's just continued to grow. His stand-up was always spectacular, but now his takedown defense is, I think, hit another level. And, you know, he's facing a, a good striker wrestler in Lamas. So, you know, we're going to see if Lamas doesn't like what he's getting on his feet because Max is so dynamic that, you know, is he going to take it to the ground and, and do what he did to Cub? Seems to be the perfect challenge at the perfect time, I think, for Max Holloway as he tries to vault into that top three potentially and earn himself his first UFC featherweight title shot. Lightweight matchup here, Dustin Poirier and Bobby Green. What a calendar year it has been for Poirier since the Conor McGregor fight. Back at 155 pounds, doing good work. Big test for him here against Bobby Green. Yeah, Dustin Poirier, I think, is looking much better at 155. A lot of guys were cutting too much weight and trying to be the bigger guy, but depleting themselves. Uh, that trend, I think, is starting to change now. It's changed with Poirier, and he's looking amazing. And then Bobby Green, though, is fighting a super tough guy, very athletic, good wrestler, good stand-up. This fight will definitely move one of these guys closer to a title shot in those ruthless lightweight waters. It all comes your way at UFC 199 on June 4th from the Forum in Inglewood, California. You can see it on pay-per-view. With that, for Joe Silva and Sean Shelby, I'm John Anik. Thank you for watching the watch list for UFC 199. We'll be back soon with the watch list for UFC 200.